I know what you want. You want to see the movie. <clears throat> but a better. Please do more of your British, your authentic. Have British you? Man. Are you caught up on last podcast? Is that authentic? No, I'm way behind. It's all authentic, Nick. This is how I talk. Oh, <laughs> I got a little. Uh, is that Cockney? No, it was... he drops the Anthony facade, and we finally see who he really is—an authentic British man. <laughs> Cheerio! <laughs> all right, oi, governor. <laughs> <laughs> What's all this then? <laughs> oh, I came in fun with me boy, me, me, me point. I came for some bangers and mash. <laughs> I came in this bar to pick up some beds. <laughs> some beds? <laughs> some, I'm here I'm to pick bed. up some beds. Some beds. No, I said beds, Brandon. That's what we call ladies when uh, you're picking them up at okay. the at the pub. Got okay, at see? the pub with your pint. <laughs> So it's been a minute since I've been in the proverbial booth. It has, I know. Sitting about five feet from where the magic theoretically happens. Theoretically? I fuck on this bed so much. You I look at it. That is of... a bed that's made for fucking. <laughs> you, you kind of slipped into that British there when you got excited. <laughs> look at it. Look at it. I fucked there all the time. <laughs> that's where I get my bangers and mash if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Oh. Uh, now that we've had the most obnoxious cold opening of the uh, show so far. With every cold open, we lose a little bit more of oh, a little bit. Yes. I don't... <clears throat> you all right? Oh, oh Jesus. Uh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Anthony's dying. It's no. time for the ceremonial Anthony vomit. I'm just... <laughs> I'm just getting prepared for when we do Lucifer Valentine slaughtered vomit dolls. Let the podcast begin! You even vomit in a British accent. It's just... Boy. <laughs> it's just hours of vomiting. So much I don't puking. know if I can do those. Oh, so We'll have to see. Alright, welcome back to the Real Obscure Podcast. I hope you stayed uh, and endured all of that. Um... <laughs> Brandon's like, I didn't hit record yet. <laughs> Brandon's like, I'm going to have to edit this shit. Oh, man. Listen to all of that all over again. Yeah, it's fine. But, so, we're back. <laughs> and who's back? Nick is back. Nick's Woo! back. In the booth, y'all. That's now right. my car is a slightly less piece of shit, because it at least gets me from point A to B. So, that's how I'm point, here. Point Anthony to Brandon. Yeah. Oh, 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 I whoa. like that. That was, that was quick. <laughs> Did you... Did you listen to the newest episode? No, I wasn't in it. Why would I listen to it? <laughs> That's fair. That's I'd probably fair. have the same opinion. I do have it. questions, though, because you did, like, a, a hentai thing, right? Yeah. Why? I mean, I <laughs> nothing against the movie, but it's like, it is porn, essentially, isn't it? Pretty much. Yeah. I, it was Anthony's suggestion, so Con- Anthony. Oh, of course it was. <laughs> considering we've had such an issue with the rape and the sexual assault in the movies mm-hmm. we watched, to go straight into tentacle rape just <laughs> seems like, uh, like, did okay. you just double down? Or? Oh boy, did we double down. But, because Raquel taught in Korea, and she knows way more about anime and everything mm-hmm. kind of re- relating to that. I felt that it was the best episode for her to be on, to fill in on, uh, as opposed to having her do, I don't know, Man Bites Dog or some shit. Yeah, no, that makes sense. However, I would like to point out that at Comic-Con 2018, Brandon and our roommate, Kai, (laughs) Such disdain. (laughs) Uh, Kai, (laughs) Yeah, and our roommate, Kai, went to Comic-Con... With the sole purpose of finding this movie. Okay. So, yes. That's true. I, I thought did... you were about to say they cosplayed as characters from the movie together. Which I would seems respect like them a gotten... hundred times more if they did. Yeah. You don't respect me? <laughs> no. Uh, no, baby, it's not like no. that. No, that's fine. No, it's totally no that's like fine. That. We're, we're, we're going to have a fun time. <laughs> It'll be a good day. Uh, yeah, so, so they sought this movie out. Mm-hmm. And I just figured... Well, Nick can't be here. Raquel is interested in the podcast, and it's it just makes the most sense. Right. And, I mean, and I then we doubled down, and everyone had, I don't know, an awful time? or a, 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 it, It's a weird episode. Okay. So, if anyone was offended, maybe I'll, sorry? Maybe I'll deign to listen to it. Maybe. 
I don't know. Sweet Prince. You don't, I don't have, have my hot takes. Have, we all watched Mandy. We did watch Mandy. Ooh. Uh, hell yes. Yeah. Oh. Emphatic hell yes. If there's an Oscar for most metal fucking movie ever, give it to Mandy. Yep. It's they're gonna so have, great. Yeah, they're going to have to reinvent, like, invent a new category yeah. called Most Metal, mm-hmm. and the award just goes to Mandy. All the awards. Most. Every th- year they give it the same award. <laughs> best, yep. yes. And best actor in a metal movie? Nick Cage. Best yep. cinematography in a metal movie? Mandy. Nick Cage. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Cage. Like, it, it, yeah. It was. Uh, I went into it with pretty high expectations, and it was that was the matched. that was the craziest thing. I went into Mandy with same with the same high expectations because the trailer is mm-hmm. phenomenal, and and it was getting a lot of buzz when it went through Sunday and, some and stuff. And you can, we've all watched a million trailers, right? A lot of times the trailer is cool, and you watch the movie, and it sucks. Yeah. The 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 red band trailer for the Predator, I thought, oh, this is better, and then we saw the movie, and it's not good. Yeah. yeah. It's in fact. Yeah. Very not good. Heard it was pretty bad. It's pretty awful. Mandy met my expectations and then doubled down on my expectations. Yeah. Oh, it was so good. And Brandon and I had the the opportunity to see it in theaters, which I'm jelly. Was that's the way to see it? The way to yeah. see it, in my opinion. So it was like I. It was just such an immersive experience. I've never been more satisfied leaving a movie theater. I felt like I had had sex and then got super high. No, yeah. the end of that movie is just like ah, oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And, but, but here, and, and so if anybody doesn't know what Mandy's about, Brandon, do you want to break down the plot of Mandy real quick? Uh, Nick, I, I would be surprised if anyone doesn't know at this point. Nicholas Cage plays a lumberjack named Red, and he is living with his girlfriend named Mandy in the forest, and she gets captured by a cult of Jesus freaks, and uh, he is on a revenge mission to get her back. And um, I think a lot of people went into this with the ironic idea of, oh, it's a Nicolas Cage crazy movie. Yeah. And that was kind of evident when we saw it in the theaters. Yeah, and that, that, that I, I talked to Brandon about this afterward because the, the 20-something behind me, the first thing out of his mouth at, after the credits were starting to roll was, man, I just love every scene with Nick Cage being crazy. Oh, geez. And then I started thinking... Is it a novelty now to like Nicolas Cage? Absolutely. Because as a bunch of 30-somethings sitting around this table, we all grew up with Nicolas Cage at the time when he was a, a top Hollywood actor. Yeah, he was up there. And I, I love Nicolas Cage. Unironically, I do think he's a good actor. I think Wild he, at heart? Yeah, but he's still being crazy in that. I think he can be a good actor. Adaptation? Yeah. Well, Adaptation. no, Adaptation, Leaving Las Vegas, I think he can be good. I think that he's kind of bought into his own crazy self-image. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it was after Wicker Man, the remake, came out. And I, people, I think, that, I think that's that was when the it started. turning point. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, well, people seem to like me just being batshit crazy, so... And I was having a conversation with my girlfriend about Nick Cage, because I was talking to her about what you were saying over the phone about it being a novelty. And... She was like, the big thing is, any Nick Cage movie where he's not being crazy, anybody could have played that part. And I kind of agree with that. The only one I argued with was Face Off. Only Nick Cage could do Face Off. I mean, he's being crazy in Face Off. Of course he is. But that's the thing. It's him and John Travolta, two people that are known for crazy being each other. Those are the only two people that could have done that fucking movie. Yeah. Who else you know? could have been in Vampire's Kiss? Well, yeah, that's Chris true. Glover would have been different. Yeah. would have been interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say it would be boring. <laughs> I just don't dig on the novelty of Nicolas Cage or kind of how it's become a thing in bad movie hipster communities. Yeah. Well, to, I, mean, I agree with that. There, to just... only like him for being crazy, because when he acts, he can oh, fucking yeah. act. There's a, there's a scene in Mandy where it's really emotional and without spoiling anything he's he he's kind of yelling and crying and it's this really emotional point and the people in the theater were laughing it's like is that the scene with the vodka yeah. yes I thought he went a little too far with that one did you I did like it, I, for most of it I'm like fucking right on right on and then that scene happened I'm like okay dial it down a little bit buddy like oh, it was it was good but mm-hmm. it was still like. 
you're Nick Caging a little bit. Don't Nick Cage. Okay. I like him better when he's not doing that. Mm -hmm. And I feel that scene sort of started to cross the line, and it was kind of like, uh, reel it in. Reel hmm. it in just a bit. But what? I don't know if that's Cage's fault as much as it would no. be because Motto's not telling him to dial it back as the director. Yeah. Yeah. I... That is true. But, I mean, if you get Nick Cage, you get Nick Cage to be Nick Cage. Or at least now you do. Maybe not back in the day. Mm -hmm. But now if you cast Nick Cage, you're doing it because of the hipster preconception of him being well, a nut. What's interesting, and I heard this on the Say You Love Satan podcast because they were talking about Mandy too. And I guess originally uh, the director wanted Nicolas Cage to play the cult leader. Mm -hmm. And he was like, no, I want to be the lead. And I, yeah, I, I think that that was the better choice. I think it's a better because choice. Because the guy yeah. who plays the cult leader is fucking Knocks boom. it out of yeah, the park. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, he is fantastic. And I looked it up and I didn't realize it's the guy that plays Thomas Wayne in uh, Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins. Mm -hmm. Huh. And the fucking chemist Richard Brack from 31 or whatever, he plays Joe Chill. So they were in a movie together before this one. Oh, yeah, oh, he, does yeah. Play, he, yeah. Does, he does play Joe Chill. Yeah. I... I Richard Brake is probably one of the only like, Rob Zombie stable yeah. of actors that I, I do think is a good actor. He's great, but yeah. he's also... I don't think he's... He was only in 31, right? Yeah, but he's, he's in 3 from Hell now. Oh, is You he? know, that Rob Zombie yeah. movie that, not, I'm that I'm not sure... We don't have time to get into it. <laughs> yeah. We can't get into it, because we'll be here all day. Um, um, I think he did a... I kept waiting for him to show up in Mandy, because I saw him in 31. I'm like, wow, you're the only good part of this movie. And then I heard he was in Mandy... I kept waiting for him to show up, and when he did, I'm like, this scene is fucking rad. Like, Dude, yeah, I that's one of my him. favorite yeah. scenes in the movie is his yeah. scene. That It's awesome. Well, but, And it's like, people talk a lot about it being crazy mm -hmm. and how they love that, but there's a lot of scenes where it's slow and it's just the dialogue, and I fucking love that. Yeah. Like, the scene where the cult leader's talking to Mandy. And that's one of my favorite that's scenes. That's one of my favorite yeah. scenes in the movie. That and even the chemist scene is very, like... Mm -hmm. talky and i'm like this is i don't know if it's the way that pantos writes or what it is but i'm just engrossed the yeah. entire time they're talking i'm like this is fucking awesome well i think that has a lot to do with the way he's shooting these scenes yeah that the, too. the the imagery between richard Brake talking nicholas cage in that scene and all the shots of him releasing the tiger mm -hmm. in just the sheer oddness of this meth lab which looks like it's a meth lab on a spaceship yeah it, it isn't it's meth so lab or it's rad. an LSD lab. It's, sorry, it's, LSD, it's LSD, not LSD. yeah, it's LSD. It's so rad. <laughs> yeah, it's the way Cosmato shoots every scene that I'm just immersed in. Yeah. I didn't find it boring. I know a lot no. of people did. Everyone was was talking about how oh it's so slow to start, and I felt yeah. for me build that shit up, yo. I mean, yeah, it's slow, but it's so worth it. The right. whole second half of the movie is worth it. But even if the second half of the movie wasn't as strong as it is, I still don't dislike the first no, part of the movie. not at all. I mean, even though it's a slow burn, it's a solid burn. Like, yeah. it's got good dialogue, the characters, the fucking... I liked that they focused on the couple, and then they, like, cut away from them to focus on the cult for mm -hmm. a while. Like, I just... I thought it was great. And yeah. I think, uh, like... Not, um, ironically, I'm like, Oscar for best cinematography. Like, I think the cinematography yeah. in this movie is so good. Yeah, I think it, it definitely deserves it, but it's one of those movies that... It won't. ...that it's, it's never in a million years going to... God, no. Like, but... I'm, oh, we wouldn't... We would never. Oh, oh, dear. Oh, no. Oh, there is blood in this? Ew. Mm. There's not a 45-minute scene of grief on a riverbank. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass. This will not make it to Janice Films. <laughs> <laughs> the very idea. <laughs> <laughs> this has Cinnabite biker meth or uh, acid head. Yes, that's why it's amazing. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's yeah. That's a selling point to me. But the Oscars would be like, oh, pish posh. So, so if I you haven't, not. if you haven't seen Mandy, go see it. Do I, it. If mm -hmm. you have the opportunity to see it in theaters, do it that way because that yeah. is how those fucking title cards on the big screen are so good. I watched it at home. I rented it, and I I reached out to a friend. I'm like, dude, watch this movie. And he's like, what's it on? I'm like, hey, Amazon. He goes, oh. And I go, yeah, it's like six bucks because it's still in the theater. So it's like six bucks to rent it. He goes, oh, I'm not doing that then. I'm like, you're part of the fucking problem. Like, you complain that there are 
no original movies and that all the movies that come out are shit, but then when a good movie comes out, you won't give it any money. Like, fuck you. Yeah. Like, vote with your dollars, motherfucker. Mm. Who was it? I'm not going to name names. You know who it was. Yeah, probably. probably. I'll figure it out. Yeah. You you know. <laughs> you know. Um, hey, so audience, can you figure it out? Huh? Write in if you can figure <laughs> it out. Um, so every, Tune yeah, in next go week to Mandy. find out who. <laughs> go see Mandy. It did bring me and Brandon to another discussion, though. Which is kind of the people who are just part of bad movie communities and these everything like Nick Cage is silly to them. Because when we saw a midnight screening of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, what was that, last weekend? Or two weekends ago? Two weekends ago. Because I wanted to go and I couldn't. And we, all, we both thought it odd that people were laughing at all the kill scenes. And the scene after Leatherface kills um, Franklin in the wheelchair and then starts chasing Sally mm -hmm. through the forest, everyone would just keep laughing. And maybe it's just because it's one of the first, like, like horror, like, it's the first, like, horror merit badge I got as mm -hmm. growing up. But I don't understand what's so funny about I this. Don't the fact that you're being chased through the woods by this doughy, crazy person, I don't know, it just makes it that much more off-putting for me. But but I, I, I do you guys think that we're kind of, like, a lot of these classic movies are just silly to people now. I think it's, well, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I think being in the theater, it was a lot of people who have seen this movie a, a thousand times. Mm -hmm. And, like, when Franklin died, everyone started cheering because that he's character obnoxious. is awful. Yeah, and, well, that's also just a classic scene, watching mm -hmm. him plunge that chainsaw into the wheelchair and the arms go. Like, yeah, that's yeah. just an iconic scene. And As I, a kid, though, that freaked me oh, out. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think a lot of the laughter that I noticed was coming from the dinner scene, which does, it, it, it is kind of, it's good, but it's ridiculous. Right. How it just keeps ramping up and ramping up and ramping up. Um, the, the laughter in Mandy was different to me because it was, it was people reacting to, to his overacting or their perceived over, overacting. As opposed to a bunch of people enjoying a movie that they've seen a thousand times in a theater. I think with something like Texas Chainsaw, and I think that, I don't, it's one of two things. I don't know if it's that younger viewers are more desensitized now, because when like Texas Chainsaw came out, and even when we were younger, that shit was still considered like, hard. Like, that was a hard movie. Right. And now that's fucking nothing to, to these kids today. Um, but I also know that... Nick Rock, old man on the porch. Yeah. Um, I also know that in instances like that and a lot of other rough movies that I've seen with people that either don't typically watch them or are watching them for the first time, they'll laugh when they get uncomfortable because they don't know what else to do. Mm -hmm. Like, But then there are also like fucked up scenes that we laughed at when we were in the theater like when we went and saw gladiator in the theater and that kid got blasted by that cart you and i started <laughs> laughing our asses off i mean it was pretty funny it was really funny and then i was in the theater with a friend of mine and my ex when we went and saw zodiac and zodiac turns to her he goes i'm gonna throw your baby out the window mm -hmm. and me and my friend just started laughing our asses <laughs> off and my ex was like mortified she's like that's not funny and it was pretty funny <laughs> so if you don't know yet nick and i Original Edge Lords, apparently. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I just think that viewing these a movie like Texas Chainsaw with a, a younger audience was an interesting experience for me because I don't know what's terribly funny about somebody getting hit in a bag over and over and over again. I but, think it, it's it's his acting. It's it's you know he's he's kind of flip flopping between now I'm gonna I'm gonna I, everything's gonna be okay and then shut up and then he. And then he starts poking her. And yeah, because he's crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it's. I think it's. I think it, that that part is intentionally supposed to be funny. I disagree yeah. with you. You think the dinner scene is that what you're talking about? No, no I'm the scene where she where she's in the truck where we find out that the dad oh, is the bad yeah, guy. He yeah. starts poking her with a stick, and then he stops, and then he like pokes her a few more times, and then he starts smiling. Oh, I thought that was supposed to be funny. Yeah. You guys. No, I, I cannot. With with you right now, <laughs> all right, all right. But I will disagree. With, I think that the dinner scene is less ridiculous and more just kind of an exercise in ramping up the tension. That's mm -hmm. one of my favorite scenes in any horror movie of all time. Right, mm -hmm. but they bring down a corpse to smash a woman's head in with a hammer. 
Well, he's yeah, not a corpse. That he's scene, not dead. Is that he? scene well, is... He's, he's pretty close. Man. Can yeah. you imagine... We, you know, we're going to get into a yeah. full-blown argument about <laughs> right. this. And this we're going to have Texas, to do a whole other episode on... And this is the Texas, this is not the Texas chain cast. No. So, yeah. speaking of uncomfortable and frustrating and irritating <laughs> and ridiculous, uh, welcome to the... Ri- no. <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing another intro. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're doing something a little bit different today. Um, we're doing what we're calling what, Brandon? A director dissection. Where... Every maybe five or six episodes, we kind of talk about a director of several movies rather than just a movie. And uh, today, we're talking about <sighs> Creep Creeperson. I didn't sigh, just for the <laughs> record. That was those two guys. So, originally born Matthew Thorin Wall in Anaheim, California in 1978, Creep Creeperson is a... F- a, a musician, I believe he was a musician first yeah. before turning filmmaker, and he is he has directed such movies as Strap In, Creep Creeperson's Frankenstein, OC Babes in the Slasher of Zombie Town, Erection, He, Vaginal Holocaust, Peeping Blog, Orgy of Blood, Caged Lesbos a Go Go, Sexual Violence in Cinema, Ding Dong Dead, The Corporate Cutthroat Massacre. The Brothers Cannibal, The Brides of Sodom, Lake Death, Lovesick Captivity, Finger Bang, I Was a Teenage Suicide, Meet Me Out in the Sticks, The Roommate, The Bedroom, Michelle, I Need More Blood, A Night with the Outlaw, Dead, 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 from 2006, Baby Dracula, Decomposing Jack, The Rabbit is Leaking, Creeperson's Nightmare, Creep Creeperson's Creep Show, Creep Show's Revenge, Creep Creeperson's Creep Show Part 2, Decomposing Jack, Cannibal Blood Girl, Monster Killers Club, which we're gonna talk about, Amateur Porn Star Killer 3D, Electrolyte, The Human Race, and Vampire Boys. Two things. Baby Dracula sounds fantastic. <laughs> I, I don't know say. why we didn't cover that one. Um, because it wasn't in the three pack of movies. But number two... Wait, you got a three-pack? I had to buy them all individually. No, these are all separate. Oh, okay. Um, Secondly, that's just prolific, bro. You're saying that like it's bad. You listed that like that was a bad filmography, but that is numerous. Let me ask you, did you watch any of the trailers for those? No. Watch the trailers for (laughs) those. And and then report back. I'll get on that. (laughs) I'm definitely watching a trailer for Baby Dracula. I promise (laughs) you that. So we watched three of the prolific Creep Creeperson filmography, we watched Frankenstein, The Corporate Cutthroat Massacre, and Peeping Blog. And so, why don't one of us take a movie and we'll break it down. Real quick, I've been driving Anthony crazy since we watched these movies because I've refused to share my opinion oh, on any yeah, of them. Yeah, it's driving me nuts. He's been going crazy. So I'm going to lay, lay it out right now. One of them I was indifferent to. Like, it was Whatever. One of them I hated with a fiery passion. One of them I kind of liked. Oh, what? Oh, no. What the fuck? Oh. Get, get out. You're oh. off this podcast. I kind of liked it. Oh, this will be interesting. Oh, God. Thank God. Because because I'm... I bet, so I, know I, which, kinda, I bet I know which one he liked, too. Which one? I bet he liked corporate... Wait. All right, okay. No, you're allowed to guess. I'm not. I'm not giving anything if, if away. You I like, got poker if face, you liked bro. Frankenstein, I cannot I ever know. talk to We're you again. We're shutting this whole thing down. Poker face, bro. I'm not showing anything. All right, so we'll each take a movie and break it down. Does that sound fair? Yeah, that works. Story breakdown. <laughs> oh, All right, uh, you got to find like a public domain guitar uh, riff to put in there. Yeah, just like a sick bass riff. Yeah. So, the first one is Corporate Cutthroat Massacre. Nick. I'm taking this one? All right. Um, my notes look like the scribblings of a crazy person. So, this is a movie where, um, what does the cover say? It's like The Office meets American Psycho? It, that's not true. Um, <laughs> nothing happens, really. Nothing. Like, okay, so the story is there's this woman that runs an office, and I guess she's like, a hard ass that runs this office with an iron fist. She's the ice queen. Ice queen, yeah. Stereotypical ice queen. And she forces everybody to stay after to pull up reports for reasons because the company's going badly. On uh, all those computers they don't have. Yeah. Right. And uh, 
the wait there were no computers in there there are scenes in this movie movie i use air quotes okay. movie okay. um where they're talking about the 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 business contracts and in mm-hmm. the deals yes there's city of cubicles with no fucking computers <laughs> the big accounts and people are just picking up phones and saying Okay, great. That'll be 20, 20 units? Okay, great. I just sealed the big account. Yeah. yeah. They never I, specify the, 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 what they're <laughs> selling, yeah. what they're no, doing. what their company does. It's office stuff, bro. The, the, the they script, sell office stuff. The script says, character answers phone. Office talk, office talk, office talk. Character hangs up phone. Yeah, pretty much. Continue. That's just improv, bro. <laughs> they yes and that. Oh my uh. god. <laughs> so... I'm going to give him a stroke before the end of this episode. So, um, one thing, those beginning credits went on forever. That's and a theme now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a thing with these movies. And the what was weird is it would have music playing, and then it would cut to a title, and the music would stop. And then it would cut back to the scene, and the music was playing again, and then the title would come up, it would stop. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, do you not know how, like, Premiere works? Or is this a <laughs> deliberate choice you're making? Because it's like, have music or don't. Um, but so she has all these people stay out to pull up ambiguous reports for their sales because she has to fire a couple people. And there's a cast of characters that I don't know any of their names. There's two that are engaged. There's one guy who's a sleazy, sleeping around guy. There's another girl who's getting drunk because she doesn't want to be there. There's the jokester. The jokester guy. Yeah. Um, who winds up getting drunk also and getting fired because he ordered her, the boss a stripper, right? Yep. But it was a lady stripper. stripper. Yeah. What, what I don't kind know if of I'm jumping prank ahead. is that? <laughs> I don't know. That's not a prank. That's just sexual harassment. Yeah. That's you. There could be charges for that. Um, please stop these credits for the love of God. I'm just reading <laughs> notes now. Um, I have a note here that says 15 minutes in an opening credit still happening. Yes, yeah. It was, <laughs> and the movie's only what, 70 minutes? Like it's 70 not even, minutes. 70 minutes. And the first 15 of that is the beginning credits. Yeah. So he, he definitely has a thing where uh, he stretches an idea. To make it full length when it should not be full length. If he was doing short films, he'd be knocking it out of the park. But he insists on well, doing. Well, I mean, no, maybe knocking. Not. Sa- save save this for the for the the other segment. Okay. Okay. Let's 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 tip it. Let's just focus on corporate. Let's just try to get through it. Um. How, how much padding can there be in a seventy minute movie? Not how work works. It's been a while since I watched it, but there were a lot of problems. I this was to this to me is how somebody who's never had an office job perceives having an office job yes Mm -hmm. it's it's all of your knowledge from how an office works is from movies right he's a fucking punk rocker who makes indie horror flicks when has he worked in an office with like bosses don't talk that way to their employees and if they did they would get sued like it's not how work is now granted they talk shitty to their employees but they'll do it in kind of a subtle passive aggressive offhand way to avoid getting taken into hr um, the music was really bad. The score was just, it was the same, like, 20 seconds yep. over and over and over again through the whole thing. He found one royalty-free loop and used that to the But no, extent. he didn't, because there's someone with a music credit on this. So someone came oh. up with 20 seconds of music and was like, make it work. <laughs> um, I'll take my paycheck now, creep. Paycheck. I'll yeah. take my pizza now. <laughs> Mr. Creeper said. Well, a little bit further down. Uh, note. Almost 45 minutes in, and there is no massacre. Mm -hmm. Because this is a 70-minute movie, and 45 minutes in, it's still just... It's like office hijinks, but it's not even hijinks. It's just them sitting in an office. It's office hijinks kind of paired with talking shit about your boss. It's literally like an hour of talking shit about your boss, and then the last 10 minutes, shit actually happens. Kinda. Kinda. Um stapler insert shot there were a lot of weird insert shots for no reason just for editing i guess like second unit stuff well dude you gotta get you gotta get your establishing shot right right close up of a Um, stapler (laughs) the and then like the the boss character that's supposed to be like oh the hard ass bitch she was at the at this point in the movie i'm like she's the only one i like she was the only one that had any like depth to her because it shows her talking on the phone with her mom and being like stressed out and being like I care about this company. I mean, it's as 
But everybody hates me because I'm a bitch. Yeah, it's like, it's as emotional as it gets, I guess, with any creep creep or something I've seen. But, like, at least he tried to give her some depth and pathos and all that. And the other characters were just like, I'm going to get drunk and be a dick. Yeah. And it's like, I don't understand. I didn't understand who I was supposed to be siding with. Like, well, they make her. I don't think he knew. Yeah, no, he probably didn't. Because it's like. I, I hated the the people that worked in the office, and I liked the boss, but I think it's supposed to be the other way around. Because mm-hmm. she's like, oh, all these people... It's, again, someone who's never worked in an office. She's like, these people need to get to work and make money and all this. And they're like, what a bitch. And yeah. I'm like, no, you're at a job. Yeah. Maybe, you need to move units. Maybe this is your job. job. This is what you're paid for. Maybe put the vodka away and right. do your job. Maybe. Exactly. Maybe you wouldn't be in this predicament. <laughs> Who keeps a bottle of vodka in their desk drawer? Yeah. Who does Who that? Do- <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> 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 um. Oh yeah, and then there was that weird scene. So, oh, score is seriously worse than Black Devil Doll. I had to throw <laughs> that out there. Um, there's a scene where she, first of all, the sleazy guy talks to the boss at one point about how he like went down on her and was trying to go down on her to get out of staying after work. And then later she finds a tape. Someone's like um, taunting her, I guess. And she finds this video camera of someone going down on her in her office. And they're like going to blackmail her with it. And I'm like, there's a lot of weird head stuff in this movie. And that scene was really weird. Like it was graphic, but not graphic. Mm -hmm. Like the guy was obviously not really going down on her. Mm -hmm. But it was also like... He was kind of up in there, and I'm like, what is this? Why? Well, well they don't call him Cunnilingus Creeperson on the street for nothing. Oh, no, I didn't know. <laughs> all of all of the characters in this movie look like they're stuck in the prologue of a porno. Yes. The whole movie <laughs> oh. feels like the prologue <laughs> yeah. of a porno. Yeah, that never happens. Yeah. 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 Um, and it's... so then there's a twist that comes in the last five See, minutes of the movie it's weird because i feel like we're skipping a lot but nothing happens it's just them in the office like bullshitting for an hour there's just ja- oh, the the uh the janitor she's the new janitor yeah. and she's like you should know where to go hi i'm jeffrey red herring yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um he reminded me of oh what's the guy there's a character actor he kind of looks like thomas hayden church though just a little bit. He reminded me of the guy, I think he was in Tango and Cash. He's got like the curly red, kind of reddish blonde hair to here. He was in, what the fuck else was he in? I keep thinking of this Tales from the Crypt episode. And I should have thought of this ahead of time. But he looks like a character actor that's kind of uh, buff and like weird, but not buff and just kind of creepy. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's like around and again, like you said, red herring. They keep pointing at him like, eh, eh. Yeah, it's probably this guy because this is happening now and it's his first day. Um, twist, it's not, and the boss is crazy yeah. and she just kills everybody. Yeah, but it, mostly off screen. Mostly, it, it's a twist that's totally not earned. It's, yeah, no, it's not set up at all. No, it's just she's crazy. I said, my note says, are they seriously high tensioning this shit? No, oh, they did. Yep. They high tensioned that, the it. fuck it, out of it. That's it. They high tensioned the shit out of it, and it was like. It didn't make any sense. It came out of nowhere. High tension, good movie up until that twist. Yep. yep. And they keep cutting back to like stuff that happened earlier with the boss. Like, oh, see, we were giving you hints the whole time. <laughs> All the time. clues you missed. And it was like, no, man, yeah. you're, you didn't give a shit. You, it, none of this adds up at all. And uh, <laughs> it was like the longest twist ever. Because the twist happens and then it's like, oh, okay, so it's going to end with her looking in the mirror all crazy. No. Nope. She's going to look in the mirror all crazy. We're going to cut back, show stuff from before her being crazy more. Stuff from before her being crazy more. I'm like, the twist is the end of your movie. It's like, almost, you need to stop now. It's, it's almost like we have to watch the movie again. Right. And well, watching got, it the first look, time was boring enough. Well, because it's such a it's such a detailed, subtle movie, uh-huh. Brandon. He has to rem- he has to show mm, you right. what was happening. Right. That's he right. has to give you all the clues, Mr. Policeman. Uh-huh. Oh, and what's great is she kills, like, it cuts to her, like, it shows her beating someone to death that we didn't see before. And all these, it keeps cutting back to her killing these people, but at no point does she have any blood on her. 
Right. And, and I'm like... For, for, for a movie called The Corporate Cutthroat Massacre, it's surprisingly bloodless. Yeah, there's almost none. And no one gets their throat cut. No. No. Well, I think he was doing... He was being clever, Anthony, because the corporate world is so is, uh, Yeah, Pretty yeah, cutthroat. okay. Come you know, on. He's, he's, he's working at a, a bunch of different This levels. is high art here. I <laughs> could not make a more jack-off motion if I tried. You're going I thought, real I thought that was plunging the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I do. I plunge my dick. Okay. Just, that, just saying. Wait, you plunge it? Yeah. Well, I don't... I plunge it right into Nick. <clears throat> Where does it go? That's Hello? for you to find out. <laughs> we all got. Oh, I don't want to find out. Yeah, no, it's not. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> um, but there's nothing to move on to. That's it. That's the whole That's fucking the movie. movie. It twists to her being the killer, and it's the janitor. They red herring him through the whole thing, and then it at the end. Through the whole thing, he's in the last. He shows up the last fifteen minutes. No, he was in the beginning. No, he's not. No, yeah, he, he shows is. up halfway through the movie. No, he right. showed up. Brandon like, Tiebreaker. The the only the only I only remember him coming in, introducing himself in the office like halfway through. I thought it was near the beginning that he showed up. He's like, "Hi, I'm the new janitor, and I'm here." And then you don't see him for a long time. That's halfway through the movie. Is it? Yeah, because she because she kicks him out because she she talks down to him right. like he's a dog, right. and then tells him to fuck off. Then we don't see. Then him we don't see him. Twist. But be, but because he looks kind of like gangly and weird, he's supposed but then to be. It shows her cooler. like chasing him down the hallways and like knocking him down and beating him down. I'm like, mm. yeah, and he's Mrs. She's Babcock. Like, ah, <laughs> she's like. Is. Fucking a buck twenty, and he's like two hundred something pounds. Like, yeah, and has, she's chasing him down. He, he looks like meth strength. he looks yeah. like Lurch if Lurch were a roadie for the Grateful Dead. Accurate, mm-hmm. accurate, very accurate. But she apparently overpowers him and beats him to death. Like, I don't understand. She has crazy strength. I guess, man. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it. Like, there's not. This is the problem we're going to have with the Creepers in episode, because not a whole lot happens in these movies. No, we'll, just kind we'll, of... we'll, we'll get into Creepers in, though. Yeah, we'll... we'll... That is a, a wealth of... Okay, a wealth of uh, So it greatness. ends, Nick, and we'll just do a quick, quick fire round. Nick, did you like this movie? This was the one I was indifferent on. Like, okay. it was... Okay. Oh, it was... Oh, 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 you son of a oh, bitch. Oh. <laughs> Oh God! It was uh, like tummy hurts. <laughs> it was. It wasn't bad. It was well. It was bad, but it was kind of the um, the thing I kept saying to myself is this is what I thought I was gonna feel with Black Devil Doll, where it's kind of boring and bad, but it's mostly harmless, forgettable, like forgettable, harmless, like whatever. I I wouldn't watch it again, but I'm not like pissed that I watched it. All right. You know, and it was more or less uh, harmless and inoffensive. It was just kind of a thing that happened. Okay, Brandon, quick fire. Did I like it? What did you What did you think about this? Did oh, you I, like it? No, it was boring. I hated it. Don't watch it. <laughs> Don't watch it. <laughs> I'm of the same mind of Brandon. I feel I felt that this was. I feel like they had an outline for a script. Like they did a. Mm-hmm. This is a first draft script. Yeah. And they shot it, and then someone put it out. And my tummy hurt the entire he time. Put it out. <laughs> I hate this movie. It's so boring. It's so dumb. And everything feels so on the nose and by the numbers mm-hmm. in what you would expect a movie called The Corporate Cutthroat Massacre. It's a bunch of obvious office jokes that I think they. There's a movie I watched right around the same time Brandon and I watched. It's called Mayhem. Mm-hmm. And it fucking rules. And it does a much better job of kind of playing with those office tropes. So I wouldn't recommend this. I hated it. It's boring. And nothing makes me more angry than a movie that's boring. It's exactly what you think a movie Corporate Cutthroat Massacre is, but more boring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brandon, Frankenstein is all you, baby. Frankenstein. Creep Creeper since Frankenstein. Uh, This movie, we have our main character, which um, I don't remember his name. What? I don't think they ever said I it. I think his name was Victor. Oh, yeah, Victor. 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 Yeah, yeah, his name is Victor. Because, obviously! Yeah. Yeah. Hey, does everyone get it's it? It's Frankenstein, come on. So, he, he's get hanging out... Creeperson's level. <laughs> he's hanging out in an attic. Uh, he has a mouse called Frankenstein, which talks to him. Um, not a lot happens. We, we watch a lot of other movies that I'd rather be watching. There's clips from... Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, there's clips from Dracula. Again, these intro credits go on 
forever. Yeah, the intro credits and are so long. Intercut with like super. There's scenes from other movies that are better. The classic mm-hmm. movies are superimposed over the credits of this movie. Why? It, I get, they're bringing you into Victor's world, man. So no, Victor watches no, Carnival he, of Souls on repeat all day yeah, long? Yeah, he watches classic horror movies all the time. That's what Why he do does. we need to watch that? We don't need to watch it. Like, the majority of this movie is better, older movies. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that's, I think, also setting the tone for him that this is what he does. And I have a note here that says, 10 minutes in, nothing has happened. Because we're just watching him in this attic bedroom, not really do anything, talk to his his mouse Frankenstein, and then there's this bonfire happening outside later. I think we also need to mention right off the bat, he's mildly mentally challenged, He right? seems like he's mentally challenged. Like he seems kind of Forrest Gumpy yeah. or Sling Blady yeah. hanging out yeah, with Yeah, he, he seems like he's uh, he has some kind of mental illness. Um so there's a bonfire happening outside. It's not really clear where. Um, so Victor goes outside and he... Does he kill her or does he drug her? Anyway, he acquires this woman. <laughs> and he takes her home and he starts drawing like stitch marks on her arms and neck and her body with a sharpie. And this brings her to life. Yeah. Well, she was dead. He killed her. Okay. And then So okay, yeah, she was dead. He uh she he he draws all these lines on her and then that somehow brings her to life. But she only talks through like a silent film filter, so it's all grainy and brown and there's subtitles and she's like a real she's real sassy to Well, there's oh, title yeah. cards. There's title cards yeah. for it because I because reasons because he's so tied up in the silent film era that was that Marvel set Souls, that tone. Not a silent film friend. No, okay. But... <laughs> <laughs> he got you straight fire. The cabinet of Doctor Caligari is right. Dracula, no. not no. <laughs> Hunchback of Notre Dame is the original I don't think one. So. I thought the original one was. Oh, I don't. Care. I don't know. We're, it does, we're, we're it doesn't matter. Too much thought. Anyway, so no. I mean, that's the point. He he sh- the. The body he creates has, like, breakfast with him, and then she leaves. And then we see... She talks a bunch of shit to him. She talks a bunch of shit. And then, like, the ghost of his mom shows up, which is just Creep Creepers in a wig. We only see from behind. I don't even think he's wearing a wig. I think that's just his hair. (laughs) I think he was just rocking long, curly black hair. And in, in in that scene that's, like, five minutes long, there's seven gay slurs... There's a lot. It's the F word, which is not fuck, used seven times. Um, and I have here Creep Creeperson as the mom, a.k.a. Fat Ghoul. <laughs> um, and that's kind of all that happens. Someone comes up in the in the attic, notices him with the body. She runs down, he tracks her down, and that's it. There's nothing that happens in this movie. There's nothing that happens in this movie! I hate it! This movie makes me crazy! <laughs> It's true. Brandon really hated this movie. (laughs) And um, I I think it's important to point out that the the gay slurs were only driven home even more for us because we watched the documentary and and per per creep himself, well, it had to be, and I'm kind of paraphrasing, it had to be a, a lady because why would you make a dude Frankenstein? That just sounds kind of gay. Yeah. And yeah. Brandon and I both hard side all yeah. over our living room. Yeah, he's like, I, yeah, I didn't it, watch any it, of those. It never things. really made made sense to me why uh, why Doctor Frankenstein would make a dude when you could make a, a lady. It seems kind of gay, you know. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, oh come on, man. I didn't see that. <clears throat> the whole Frankenstein thing kind of is kind of gay, like in a homosexual kind of way, and like I don't know why anyone would want to make a dude because the last thing I'd want to do is make some guy. I would want, like, Bride Reanimator, like, one of my favorite movies, and Bride of Frankenstein is one of my favorite movies, because, dude, if I was going to make a weird science, even, make a chick, dude, that's how I see it, like, God, who wouldn't want to make a chick to do whatever the fuck they wanted, like, I mean, this is, is like, even Stepford Wives type shit, like, God, that has to be, like, everybody's dream, like, a girl to just beck and call and put parts where you want them and, you know, tit on the back to give a big hug, I don't know. <laughs> Brandon is not lying when he says that this is 
a nothing movie. He, we spend a lot of time in the beginning. He talks to his pet rat. He gets, he kills the girl. He gets the girl. He draws little stitches on her like she's a Nightmare Before Christmas doll. And then she comes back to life. She talks a bunch of shit to him. Movie over. That's it. And this movie, I mean, mercifully, it's 60 minutes long. So it barely qualifies as a feature length movie. And as always, 20 minutes of that, like the intro credits. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's kind of, that was the part for me, that documentary, watching him talk about it, where I was like, oh, fuck you, dude. I, that, 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 me too, because I, I like to take the stance of, oh, this guy's just making movies. They, you know, they may not be amazing. They're all shot on camcorders and the acting sucks, but he's doing something. But then he takes a stance like that. It's like, okay, well you lost me. Sorry. And and maybe we're jumping ahead a little bit, but do you have anything more to say about this movie? I don't. All right, I let's go around it. the <laughs> let's go around the table. Nick. I kinda like it. Ah! I knew it. I knew it. Ah! I knew it. I kinda liked it. Okay. Alright, alright. What did you like about it? It I mean, if you're going into it knowing what it is, like it's a fucking art house film. I mean it is. It is. What? Yeah, how are you not seeing this? He's he's socially inept and and mentally challenged anybody talking to him it's that weird backwards talking yeah they're stuck they're stuck in the black lodge yeah yeah they're in the black lodge um but i obviously i think that represents his inability to communicate with people and connect to anybody outside of himself and his rat and it the the doing the silent film stuff with the girl, I, at least it's interesting. It's visually different. I, at least he was trying stuff. I will say, the back removed from this movie, the backwards talking and the silent film stuff was something. Yeah. But it's couched in this movie that is full of nothing. It's full of like... Well, but and the thing with the gay slurs, I didn't watch the documentary. But what I was taking from the gay slurs was that the mom was berating him like a lot of serial killer or killer's parents do. I mean, look at, like, John Wayne Gacy, Ed Gein, any of those people. Their parents were very much like, you're a little queer, and that's why they become crazy, or at least part of it. And that's what I thought initially watching the movie until we watched the interview with him about it. See, I didn't see the interview. I can agree that I... It, he, yeah, he's trying something, but none of it is ever. None. I'm not. I don't want to use the word grounded. None of these scenes, like the, using the silent film filter in the title cards for her, her talking to him and having me watch superimposed scenes from better movies over the title credits. I never felt like any of that connected. See, it and, did and, for me. and what I mean by that is, what about these films? really draws him in and i never really connected with any of that whereas i've seen other movies where you know you have a film obsessed character who kind of goes out and tries to do what he's seen on films i mean fade to black anybody fade to black. Yeah. um but it, it these scenes go on so fucking long yeah that it loses me because i get bored yeah I've watched Carnival of Souls. I could just put on Carnival of Souls. I don't need to watch Carnival of Souls through the filter of your movie. Yeah, I agree with that. I think, and I think it's a thing that comes up in at least all of the Creep Creepers and movies I've seen, where he has an idea, and he's trying to get a point across, but he just doesn't have the skill to do it. Like, I think that the silent movies were supposed to show that this is, like, his only connection to other people. And that's why when the girl, quote-unquote, comes to life, which I, I think is all in his head, obviously. And she talks through this silent film filter because that's the only way he can connect to other people. Like, they're interesting ideas. Creeperson just sucks at <laughs> yeah. pulling it off. Like, he can't... He tries so hard to get these points across that it's like... He feels the need to, like, spoon-feed it to us. And it's like, we get it, dude. You're driving it home too hard, and you're taking so long trying to drive home what you're doing that we get bored, because we get it. We get it. Like, with uh, Victor, when he would wake up, go downstairs, brush his teeth, and eat breakfast or whatever, 
they showed that same thing multiple times and they were long like you watch this guy fully brush his teeth multiple times I'm, i made the comparison to brandon while we were watching that and thank you for bringing it up because it just yeah. reminded me of this it's like in writing when you're first starting out as a writer and you're you're you write in your first stories there's this in this need to say everything your character is doing mm-hmm. he got out of bed his feet touched the floor he walked across the bedroom he put his hand on the doorknob he turned the doorknob he opened the door there's like this weird inherent need to be like i gotta show everything see I, that's not what i took from it what i took from it was it was showing the repetitiveness and the mundane oh it's definitely mundane right and but but we got that with he could have done the same thing edgar wright style and like in a creative three or four interest quick yeah, shots but and he, you get the same idea right it's in how you do it right but i don't believe that that's what he was trying to do i think he just didn't know what he was doing and i think in his head he was like oh i just got to show every moment of action that this character is going for maybe i don't know I didn't watch the inter- or the documentary or the interviews with him, so I've only watched like one or two interviews with him, and from what you guys uh, have sa- said... Save it. Save okay. it for the end. But I think it's relevant to okay. what we're saying, because the, the few that I saw, he didn't seem well-spoken, but he wasn't like, the fucking tits and faggot and nah. <laughs> like, I didn't get that from him, so maybe I had a different view of who this guy is. Because it seemed like he was really trying to do something with this movie. Not that he necessarily accomplished it, but he was trying to do something. So, I mean, I mean, that's more than I can say about Corporate Cutthroat Massacre. Like, he, he had something to say with this movie. And I think it was because it was one of his earlier ones. What do you think he was trying to say? I think he was trying to... Maybe not like a message, but he was trying. It was like a character study of this guy that can't connect with other people, and he's living on this farm. Which, by the way, I want to live where this guy lives because that farm was pretty sweet. I think it's the Pacific Northwest. It's awesome, um, but just this kind of sad, simpleton guy that can't connect with other people that doesn't know how to socialize at all. Like, I think that there was a, a character study at the base of this. He just doesn't have the skill to pull it off. And I was like, oh, maybe it's because it's one of his earlier movies and his later movies get better. And no, because it seems like instead of going, oh, I had this cool character study. Let's learn from this movie in this direction. He went, well, I'm going to make a more boring and less. I have so many meaning. things to say mm-hmm. about that idea of which you are speaking right now, but mm-hmm. I'm going to save it. OK, so. Are we ready to jump? If we said well, we didn't we go, want to, oh wait, yeah, we're gonna you go guys around. both hated it. Yeah, I don't think I don't think we need to go around no, the room no, again. No, no. But I think it's pretty obvious. Nick, Nick, I kind of liked, kind of liked it. Brandon hated it. I did not like it. I hated it. Which means I'm taking the reins of peeping blog, which is probably a cop out because it's that's a pretty big cop out. <laughs> right, right off the bat, something I want to say about this movie. What? This is the one I was most hesitant to watch because of what it is, the content. Sure. And having, it was the last one I watched, so I'd seen the previous two, and knowing what this movie was, it's the first time in a long time I was putting a DVD into the player, and I was like, uh, like, it had kind of a dangerous feeling to it, because I'm like, this guy obviously does not follow any rules of conventional cinema, good or bad. (laughs) Or logic. Like, so putting this in and knowing it's about a stalker and all that, it's like, how far is this dude gonna go? Like, I don't know. And it's the first time I've had that in a long time. So that alone was, I mean, obviously, it uh, wasn't, it, it was much ado about nothing, but it, it's the first time I've had a dangerous feeling in regards to a movie in a while. Like, I was hesitant to watch this movie. So I just wanted to start off saying that, that going into it before it even started, I was like, what is this gonna be because this guy's fucking all over the place Mm -hmm. right right well i'm gonna read a couple things okay before i get into this movie right hello one in 12 women will be stalked in their lifetime 15 of these will be killed at the hands of their stalker and i just got a camera peeping blog has been called the paranormal activity of stalker films Peeping Block is a super artsy cinema verite film where the footage that we are watching is the actual film shot by The Peeper as he finds a victim and spies on her. 
The Peeper is filming this as a video blog for his website, a sort of how-to site for voyeurs who want to become peepers and take their fascination to the next level. Things get a little out of hand when the victim's sister unexpectedly comes by for a visit. The Peeper is forced to make some grave decisions that change him from being just a voyeur to a killer. So we don't need to cover the movie now, right? Because that's literally everything that happens? Yep. <clears throat> this movie starts with who Creep Creeperson watching somebody on his cell phone camera at a Starbucks for God knows how long. She gets up. He follows her. Then uh, then he makes a hot pocket. He did And make that a hot takes pocket. about 15 more minutes. We watch him make a hot pocket in real time. In, he, real, in, time, real, time, uh, in real time. In real time. And longer than it takes me to personally <laughs> make a hot pocket. I don't yep. really know how he managed that. Then she comes home. And I, twist, twist. He made the hot pocket in her apartment. We didn't know that. Then she walks in the door. You're like, oh shit, he ate her hot pocket. And there's like way too long. <laughs> there's way too long of shots of him trying to hide in the background. And listen, this big son of a bitch is hiding from nobody. <laughs> That's the first Nobody. thing Megan said, too. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, he's five feet from her. Yeah. There's, yeah. Whatever he's hiding behind is, like, a wide open, and he's moving the camera. Does she not see him? And all that shuffling around is going to elicit some heavy-ass breathing. Okay, yeah. one of my main notes about this whole movie is it could have been a body cam on me, and it would have been <laughs> just heavy breathing, <laughs> eating hot eating pockets, hot pocket. driving around, just standing in the living room going like... <sighs> <sighs> like standing it over Megan. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> you have like your it, sex mask on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is... I changed my mind. I love this movie. It's the closest to my life. It's the Nick Rock biopic. Yes. It's just a body cam on me for fucking 75 minutes. She figures out he's there. He attacks her. Well, no, the sister shows up. Oh, okay. Sorry. This yeah. movie is so fucking boring. No, I... it's so deep. And there's so many Nick, twists don't and start, turns Don't in start this trying plot. to defend it just because you closely relate to it. <laughs> Right. And so the heavy breathing in the hot pockets, I just want to clarify. <laughs> the sister comes in, right? She Man. catches him. He freaks out. He ki- he rapes her? I don't know that he rapes the sister. I think the, the rape comes later. That's and later. He, he I think he kills... just bludgeons the sister. Right. <laughs> frozen <laughs> hot pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and then the sister comes home later? Or she finds him? I can't she remember. She shows up drunk. That's for right. reasons, because right. she like left her sister. Her sister comes over because she's having problems with her boyfriend. Oh god! I and then movie. the the girl that he's stalking leaves and comes back later drunk after her sister's been bludgeoned. One thing I want to say: when he's watching the main girl and the sister from behind a lamp in the, their living room <laughs> that they apparently don't see him, she. The sister goes, or the main girl goes and does something in the kitchen. The sister goes, I'm going to go smoke a cigarette. And she walks out the front door. (laughs) And I'm sitting there watching it. And Megan's over in the corner playing video games. And I I don't typically speak this way. But I'm like, are we watching this bitch smoke a cigarette? (laughs) Like, the entire cigarette. Uh And it's just a shot of a fucking cell phone camera aimed at the front door of an apartment and a girl smoking a cigarette outside the front door of the apartment yep. for the end, and she literally smokes an entire cigarette. Yep. And then comes in and goes, "Okay, I'm done." And that's a scene in this movie. I, yeah, this it's, scene it's, is generous, but it's also it, we should say everything inside the apartment is one shot, one shot, one shot, one angle. I that's was a, I was gonna make a jab at Anthony about how artistic it was because it was all a single shot because you mentioned that single shot in True Detective. And I'm like, oh, how you can mean, you like that single shot in True Detective and not like peeping along? Explain that genius. Oh, oh, I don't think I need to. Just watch them side by side. I just and it makes to watch sense the because... vein pop out on your head. Is that the I thing? Everybody is, you know, they do this to me on Dickheads. Everybody just wants me to get mad all the time. <laughs> it's really entertaining. I really like peeping blog. <laughs> no, you don't. I do. 
No, you're full That's of true. shit. You're a liar. Shoot. Get mad! No. <laughs> Get angry. You're a fucking liar. Throw the mic against so the So maybe I don't remember this movie as well as I thought I did, but some rape happens, and it just keeps going, and yeah. I watch Creep Creeperson's big fat ass <laughs> just <laughs> humping in the <laughs> side, <laughs> and it's <laughs> just the most... So, it's a not... It's it, this, this, it's if, a not if movie. Frankenstein was not a movie, this is definitely not a movie. One of the main notes I put is this is more not a movie than Sleepaway Camp Survivor. It's true. It's it's even less of a movie. And, um... It... I... I so I started watching it, and he's driving and he's following the car, and they pull into a parking lot. And he drives around the parking lot for a while. I'm like, okay. All one shot. I remember his previous movies, so I have a feeling this is going to be the tone of this. (laughs) So I put it on 1.5 speed. Mm -hmm. And I watched the whole movie (laughs) in 1.5 speed, occasionally going up to 10 times speed, Mm -hmm. and didn't miss a thing. Nope. Did not miss a single bit of dialogue between the girl and the sister. Didn't miss any plot points. 1.5 speed. And I and it was still slow. Yeah, yeah. That that's how we watched it. We're just like, okay, yep. well, we can fast forward. Well, this. to be fair, we had already sat through it once before. Yep. And we I, were like, I'm I not refused. doing this again. I yeah. refuse to sit through it once at, at normal speed. We, we were just watching it as like, hey, let's watch, let's have a bad movie night. We watched this and it ruined the night. Yeah. Oh we're yeah. Like, oh, no, man. because we Dead watched it back tracks. to back with Corporate Massacre. Oh, good lord. Did, did we? Yeah. I couldn't do that. Huh. You people are monsters. <laughs> yeah. I did I did peeping or I did um corporate and Frankenstein back to back. And that was because I kinda liked Frankenstein. That wasn't so bad. But peeping blog, I couldn't it was so bad and, and so <laughs> slow and nothing happened. And again, it was one of those things. He's like, I got an idea. Like, I'm going to be hyper-realistic with this. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what he was getting. But he doesn't have the skill to pull it off. Nope. And on top of that, Megan was watching it, and she's like, so this girl lives alone. I'm like, yeah. And she goes, and she doesn't notice him standing there. And I go, no. And she goes, well, I. she goes, when a woman lives alone, she's a little more careful than if she doesn't live alone. Like, if she gets home, she kind of checks the place out to make sure there isn't a Richard Ramirez hanging out in their closet. Mm-hmm. Like, she's like, he, this, so he's going for hyper-realism, but then she doesn't look around her apartment when she comes home. <laughs> he's, he's literally sweating bullets. <laughs> well, he just, ate a, he just ate a hot pot. Yeah. <laughs> that, and she doesn't see him. And it, it was, he, he was going for the hyper-realism. He had an idea. And he he's like, I'm going to do this. And it's like, yeah, but Poughkeepsie Tapes exists. And this is that's better than this. Yeah. The whole time I was watching it, I'm like, I could be watching Poughkeepsie Tapes. Mm-hmm. And that's a better version of this. We watched a, a, an interview with him about it before we did the podcast. And he was saying I that. I an interview and he, about it. Oh, it's on I the DVD. Looked. Oh, it's on the it's DVD. It's a very frustrating DVD menu. Because yeah. the options don't light up. No. So you don't know where, right. what you're selecting. I got it out of my player as quickly as I could. Uh, like, I played it and then I was like. Eject? Spider-Man's going back in there. Like, I'm not doing this. And he was saying how he wanted to do this film because... Film. Uh, air quotes air I quotes. agree with on this um, On all of them. Um, not Frankenstein. <laughs> and he was saying how the main actress was saying she had never done a role where she was, like... Victimized. Victimized. And he she wanted She had done to, a role? She had never done a role where she was victimized. No, completely. but I mean, she had done a role previous to this. Any role previous to this. Because that's kind yeah, of... Yeah, it, it's... I think it's mostly on this level. Okay. Stuff. And... Right. And so... Bordeaux. And so... And so... <laughs> Creep was, was said, oh, okay, well, I want to do this movie and, and give you the role that you want. And... And that's what she wanted? That's a weird... I, I, I don't think that that's what she meant. I no. think that's how he interpreted Big it. That right. guy on top of her humping Because her? who wants that's that? Not, I can attest nobody wants that. <laughs> Again, the Nick Rock biopic. Right. It's, all those, all those it's late, unpleasant for all, those, all involved, I promise you. All those late night texts I get from Megan saying, God, I'm so tired of being sweated on. <laughs> And that's not even when we're doing stuff. That's just sleeping next to me. And I'm just sweating in my sleep. So that, I guess, was the impetus of this film. Yeah. But But, in Irreversible, there's a point. But also... Right. Despite how you feel about the the, the infamous scene in Irreversible, there is a point to that movie. 
There's it's like no... what we said in Black Devil Doll. If you do it with a point, then fine. And but if this... you handle it with care, right. we can kind of talk about going into this this the, area. The only thing he handled with care was the, was hot, the hot, hot pocket. Because <laughs> he <laughs> ate it with a fucking fork. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's as right. Soon, <laughs> as soon as he started eating the hot pocket with the fork, I'm like, this guy's fucking crazy. <laughs> 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 not the stocking, not any of that. That I'm supposed uh-huh. to believe that this... <laughs> 300 plus pound man is eating a hot pocket with a fork. He's gonna, he's gonna take like, the time to get a fork when right. his hot pocket's I'm ready. Like, he's no. going to bite through the cardboard <laughs> sleeve. Oh, I love it. Oh, it burns so good. Hot pocket. Oh yeah. fuck, she's coming. Better hide behind this lamp. He drops the hot pocket on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and the fat guy waddles over to a closet that he can't fit into. <laughs> he tries like sliding under the bed. He's like, "No, that's not going to feed off the ground." I wish there was he a. He just gets under the blankets. Like, I wish there was a ball. five minute montage of him trying to that fit into places and then not be able to get in. That and would then, have made it a good movie. And then he ends up going to the one place. He's standing by the between the couch and a bookshelf. Hold on. Hold on. It was He's standing right here. Right there. Like, he's just... <laughs> <laughs> it's the little kid mentality of if I can't see her, she can't see me. And oh, it was... it's, it's him trying to, like, move chairs to hide under the dining room table, but his pudgy arms are sticking out. <laughs> just flabby arms sticking out on the sides. And the few times oh, that it oh, cuts oh, to him oh. walking in front of the camera, he's wearing, like, work boots and, like, a dicky jumpsuit yeah i'm like fuck michael myers like really <laughs> let himself go he's it, been hitting those hot the, pockets the, the, way too hard at least would have lean been, pockets the, 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 the poetic irony would have been if he had dropped the hot pocket oh shit she's home and then later when he was chasing her slips on the hot pocket cracks his fucking head open on the sink in Dies. That would have been a better. You already made a better movie. He, he than died this. the way he lived, covered in hot pocket filling. <laughs> well, it's not in a strange I, woman's apartment. <laughs> <laughs> it just, his, his doctor. Well, I always knew the hot pockets would get him, but I just didn't not think like it would this. be this. <laughs> what a twist! <laughs> Is this Creeperson or Shimalon? <laughs> I just imagine the detective. So was it the hot pocket or the sink? Or did he just have a heart attack and drop the hot pocket? God! God! I guess we'll never know what really happened. Oh, wait, we have the shaky cell phone footage to see what really happened. <sighs> God! The, the, the detective assigned to this case later on, just sitting in a hot room, smoking cigarettes, drinking cold coffee, going, How much longer does this go on? The the real the real uh, the real uh, the real movie begins after he dies. Yeah. The real clue comes when he sees that he's opening his fourth box of of uh, hot pockets. He's it's like, like oh, he just had a fat guy heart attack. <laughs> fat guy heart attack. <laughs> he, he pauses it. James said, "Get in here." He was the hot pocket. My God, uh, is that the pizza hot pocket? That was a heart. No, attack. I think it's pepperoni. I think it's oh, ham. God. I think it's the ham and cheese one. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know. So it's also, I mean, going back to <laughs> the uh, one of my notes. <laughs> when, when he bludgeons the sister, I wrote, "Holy shit, something happened!" <laughs> with like four exclamation marks. <laughs> it's uh... a. <laughs> this movie is such a nothing movie. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> so the girl shows up at the apartment after he has his hot pocket dinner. And she takes her shoes cuisine. off. Yeah, his yeah. cuisine. I would have liked it better if it was a kid cuisine. He's eating, um, he's eating the lead cuisine hot pockets and drinking Diet Coke. But she takes her shoes off. She gets a call from her sister, and she's like, "Oh, I'll come. I'll come right over." And she leaves the apartment. And he walks up and he smells the shoes, and I'm like, "Obligatory shoe smelling." Right, shoe. obligatory creepy guy foot fetish. Then she comes back with the sister. Takes the boots off again. The boots that she left behind that he was smelling. Well, we found a continuity error. She had a big <laughs> continuity error. Considering nothing happens in this movie, at least get the fucking boots right. He found a way to even mess that right. up. Right. <laughs> oh, oh, and when she's, she comes home, she's shit-faced. 
She tries to talk to her sister through the door or whatever, <laughs> not knowing that she's been bludgeoned. We gotta get through this, guys. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Brandon keeps laughing. It's 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 our college classes all over again. It is just this fat guy trying to find a place to hide is really funny to me. That would have been a great movie if Mel Brooks had directed this movie. It would have been great. But there's a scene. Glob. <laughs> she's. she's God damn it. We're going to have to cut like five minutes of us just laughing. Just who's morphing around. (laughs) It's the blob but with a hat on. (laughs) With work boots and a dicky onesie. (laughs) And a mask made out of masking tape. So the, the main girl's trying to talk through the door to her sister not knowing that she's bludgeoned. And she's like drunk and shit faced. Oh I'm so wasted. And then she turns around and walks past him. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> this is found footage, which means he's standing there with the. She can't walk past camera. No, she definitely smelled him. <laughs> it. There were. Stacy, uh, were you making hot pockets in here? <laughs> I smell ham. <laughs> Why does it smell like ham and body odor? <laughs> Did you leave a turkey in the trunk of your car? Why is there flop sweat all over in the refrigerator? <laughs> he got too stressed out because he couldn't pick what to eat. It's like, yeah. Uh, and he does. He debates between things in the freezer and he why sells are, on the hot pocket. Why is everything covered in, like, greasy <laughs> fingerprints? I don't understand. Because <laughs> oh. he just finished eating a full pizza. And he's like, oh, time for dessert. <laughs> time for a hot, hot pocket. pocket. <laughs> dessert is a hot pocket. <laughs> the peeper. <laughs> Well, now I love this movie because of this conversation happened. This made it all worth it. Oh my god. Oh, okay. So, so uh, I, one one more thing. It's important uh, during that documentary, that little 6-minute thing he was doing. He said, you know, at first I was worried about uh going too hard on him on the actress, but now I'm a little I'm a little bummed out that I didn't go hard enough on her. It's like did you want to make her feel what uncomfortable? Did yeah. you want to like actually hurt her? What are you talking about? What do you mean? Yeah. But... Yeah, I don't know. Uh, having he having... watched a documentary with Shelley Duvall about The Shining, right. and he thought, "Oh, yeah. that's what I, I can done. scream at a woman." <laughs> <laughs> I'm allowed to do that in this context. <laughs> um. Oh man. Oh. So and there were a couple things I put early. Uh, is that a blockbuster? Because when he's in the parking lot, he drives by a blockbuster. I'm like, where the fuck are you, Alaska? <laughs> oh, a period piece. Uh, yeah, right? And through the whole time in the car, he's just like <laughs> chewing randomly. Like, I'm... <laughs> he has his drive on Hot Pockets. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's his, he just keeps Hot Pockets in the That's his box. serial killer tip. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's lovingly and, tucked into a paper towel so it doesn't get everywhere. And I put, that old lady that walked by, that cyclist, are they real? Are they extras? You don't know. Because oh, they're definitely they're, real. They're, they're real. real. <laughs> but I kind of liked that because it's like, we could be in a Creep Creeperson movie. Hey, we don't wow. even know it. Well, Shit. We're all, we, we could only be so lucky. <laughs> Wait, is he in here right now? <laughs> Check behind the lamp. He's just standing, standing, <laughs> standing in the corner. <laughs> or he's wedged himself into my closet. Help! His belly, his belly Help me! Like sticking out of the closet. Well, when I figured out that this whole time I thought Kai ate all my Hot Pockets. It was you. <laughs> all right. You and I do it again. Blah, 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 blah. Woo! All right. So let's quick. I think fi- this has been our loudest episode. <laughs> we got into that. You didn't listen to Legend of the Overfiend no, it, yet. It gets loud. It gets loud. <laughs> um. All right. Um. Quick fire round. Nick. God no. God nope. no. Brandon. Nope. No. Anthony. Nope. If you're if you're even considering watching this, just watch Poughkeepsie tapes. Yeah. It's, it's much if, better. If you're thinking about, hey, maybe I'll check one of these movies out. Go Don't take a walk. <laughs> Clear Go get your some fresh head. air, and watch anything else. Yeah. yeah. Anything. But if you're looking for something with this theme that's kind of found footagey, that's actually good, Poughkeepsie Tapes. Or if you don't dig Poughkeepsie Tapes, Man Bites Dog. Or literally any other found footage or, stalker or killer like movie. Or like even the last horror movie. Have you guys anything. seen the Lego movie? Watch that. It's yeah. delightful. <laughs> anything. <laughs> Alright, so I think it's safe to say that we all unanimously hate this movie. Yes. It's pretty yes. bad. Yeah. Walk, don't run um, away from this movie. And so like... 
like I said at the top, we did something a little bit different and watched three movies to talk about the director. And now that we're an hour in, which hopefully people are still listening, I don't know. We won't take this long next time, Mm -hmm. I hope. Creep Creeperson. What do we think about him as a filmmaker? I know that he got his start. He's in a he's in a band I think called I think he's just called Creeperson. He's yeah. been in a few bands. One's called Creeperson. The other one is like a sci-fi sci-fi originals. Type. Yeah, is sci- what it's called. Sci-fi originals. You know, like like the TV, like like the TV movies, <laughs> like the Sharknados. <laughs> oh, bro, those are hilarious. Nick knows the fastest way to get me mad is to talk about Sharknado. Um, I know the fastest way to get you mad in multiple ways. It's true, but you also know the fastest way to get me to orgasm. Oh, I was going to say that? to your heart. Why? Because the way to my heart... Why is it always sex with you? Be- really? Yeah. Because the way to my heart... Is orgasm. Is, 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 is <laughs> <laughs> um, so he started as a musician, and then, and then, I don't know, maybe in like 2005, 2006... He started making films, really low budget films. Mm-hmm. He also did as we've some jail seen. time. Couldn't find out why, but he really, did some jail time. yeah. In that documentary, that. in that documentary where he throws out <clears throat> the word "gay" like a pejorative, <clears throat> we find out that he just got out of jail or whatever. And I don't know. No one can figure out why. Maybe somebody saw an early draft of Peeping Blog. Drunk mm-hmm. while fat. Drunk while fat. <laughs> yeah. Drunk while fat, hiding in some woman's apartment. Um. <laughs> What do this, we? This movie is really autobiographical. <laughs> some theme, some overall themes I've noticed throughout. And Raquel and I were watching trailers for Creep Creeperson movies before we watched Legend of the Overfiend, and she made a comment after watching. I think he made a movie called The Bitch Who Cried Wolf. And then we watched a trailer for Ding Dong Dead or whatever. Mm-hmm. And Ding Dong Dead is about a guy taking revenge on a group of hot girls that go door dashing. The bitch who cried wolf. I don't know what it's about because I stopped paying attention. But Raquel asked me if he was if all these movies are just incel the movie. Yeah. And honestly, after having seen so many of these and doing a little bit of research, they all do kind of seem like incel the movie. But Creep Creeperson's married. He, yeah, he, he has was two married. Kids. Oh, yeah. they got divorced. They got divorced. Oh, I didn't know that. He is no longer. He is no longer uh, married to Miss Creeperson, no. who played the monster in uh, Frankenstein. We forgot no. to mention. So, there, there are some kind of overarching themes I see in all of these movies, which is it, there's violence against women, mm-hmm. not done in a in a in any kind of way that I would deem socially relevant. Yeah, or <laughs> I don't. It, it's just it reminds me of the dumb, shitty like films we used to do when we were sixteen, mm-hmm. and so we're all film school dropouts here. Right, all three of yeah. us are. But I think we, but <laughs> we're all film school dropouts doing a podcast about movies. <laughs> fucking shocking. Um, <clears throat> doing a podcast about fucking creep creeperson <laughs> who's making movies. We're sitting here ragging on him. He's out there doing it. So, I'm staring at my reflection in the mirror at three in the morning in my dead eyes. Yeah, the other guy where I turned wrong. And then and then That's I'm true. in there. I'm looking at myself and I'm going. They say those who can't teach, but is that the same here? Those who can't podcast. You know what I'm doing at 3 in the morning? Sleeping. Well, that's because Nick and I are more introspective. Yes. Yeah. Sure. We're deep thinkers. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Tell me more about the Hot Pockets. <laughs> no. They're delicious. <laughs> yeah, so so Nick's right. We're doing a podcast about Creep Creepers and who's making movies. And whatever. Fuck it. But, uh, but, but, but this is... Those are the ty- These are the types of things that we would see in early film school classes. Mm-hmm. Mo- more often than not, done by dudes... No. Right? Mm-hmm. Whose only experience, I think, at that point is horror movies mm-hmm. or action films, you know. And and so if, if, if I went to a film festival and I saw this and I was like, oh, is this like a college student, like an early 20s college dude? I'd be like, eh, maybe work on these ideas, right? But Creeperson's movies never get better. No. Mm-hmm. If anything, I think they get worse. It's like he honed I feel the like- wrong... Lack of skills. I I feel that they go back and forth. Some are dog shit. And then others, I think, oh, you were trying something different here. You're trying to go one way or another. But I don't think anyone tells him, work on this. Don't do that. Yeah. Yeah, There's no... He has no guidance. Yeah, there's no guidance here. And, And 
And the reason I brought up the film school dropouts thing is because during one of the interviews I watched with him, he was saying, oh, well, I didn't, you know, I didn't go to college or no, he said, I went to college and majored in philosophy, but then I, you know, that didn't work out and I dropped out. And my only experience with filmmaking is what I learned watching the extras on movies I like, which it I don't shows. have a pro- It shows. <laughs> but here's the thing. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, me neither. We, we've talked... I think on one of the last episodes about how other filmmakers that didn't go to film school, like Robert Rodriguez didn't go to film school, and I think there are plenty of other filmmakers out there who don't go to film school who end up being great filmmakers because they work at it and they care about the craft and they listen and they learn. They they learn from every movie they mm-hmm. do and move forward. Do, yeah, and some of those evolutions, I don't really... They don't always work, right? So Peter Jackson's evolution mm-hmm. from Bad Taste and Meet the Feebles to King Kong, not, not for me, but who am, I to, who am I to, <laughs> who am I to, who am I to down talk a guy's making multi-million dollar pictures, right? Mm-hmm. Me. Oh. I will. Okay. Because his early movies are awesome, and now every movie he makes has to be like three and a half hours long and boring as fuck, but... Uh. Director dissection, Peter Jackson, yeah, no, no, some no, no. other time. We'll get into it. Used to be my favorite. Um, Two tears. So... But but here, I never see any evolution in Creeperson's movies. Mm-hmm. I, even watching the trailers for all of these, they just seem to be the same. You yeah. know, Brandon and I watched a trailer for OC Babes in Slasher Zombie Town yeah, or something. something like that. And it's just, if you like hot chicks, if you like hot chicks. And I'm thinking, this is, again, something you would make when you're 16. Mm-hmm. Right. I think that all guys kind of have to get past that kind of chauvinistic mindset. Because I think even some of the, like, when we were in college and we were doing stuff and I was writing stuff, a lot of it was casually sexist, at least that I did, and I didn't realize it until I was older and kind of, like, looked back on it. I think that you have to grow as a person to be like, oh, I, that shit used to be kind of sexist and chauvinistic and that's garbage and patriarchy all that bullshit but he never did that he never evolved he's like in an arrested state of 16 years old where he never got past the fucking boobies man like he's still that guy yeah yeah and in in kind of that interview with him on peeping blog he was talking about how He was talking to this actress, and she's like, okay, yeah, just give me the script. And he's like, well, I didn't have a script. I just had a treatment. And she was an actress, so she kind of wanted a script, but I didn't have one, so I didn't give her one. And it's like, well... That's kind of the bare minimum, isn't it? Yeah, it's just... It's just... He... he Unless you're fucking... What's his name? Christopher Guest, and you're doing, like, Best in Show or something. You need a script. And yeah. Cre- Creeperson is not fucking Christopher Guest. He's not no. He's not making Spinal Tap. These movies aren't improv. No. Right. It's not Stripes. Mm-hmm. Right. What? Stripes? Was Stripes improv? I didn't think it was. I, I believe that Stripes they made... It was, I know they Bill have Murray. Like a, yeah, they ad-libbed a lot of yeah, stuff Yeah, he ad-libbed Stripes. most of his stuff in Caddyshack, I think, yeah. too. So, that, that was my point. Oh, right. Side note. There's no... There's no actors in these movies that can really carry a movie based no. off of their ability to ad lib, improv, no. or do anything, right? The, the, fucking Ryan Stiles and Colin Mockery are no. not in these movies. <laughs> that that would have been so much Boy, better. showing my age now. <laughs> and he, we also found that web series he has. So this drives me nuts. The fact that a website that I respect and have enjoyed for a decade, yeah, for about a decade now, would even fucking consider this blows my goddamn mind it's it's called monster killers club and he plays a character with where he's trying to do a british accent i couldn't tell you why Mm. because he's trying to be like steve Irwin. that's that's the gag it's it's a steve Irwin thing and he has his character has got like swimming goggles on and he also has like like uh like laboratory goggles around his neck just because he's like a quirky dude and he goes around and like finds monsters and it's 
It's, it's it's like Crocodile Hunter, but with monsters? Kind of. Yeah, and he's like, all right, now we're outside of here, and we're going to find this alien in a UFO inside this uh, this shop or whatever. And then he goes, and when Bran and I both looked at each other, we watched this one episode where he goes into, I think it's a restaurant or something, mm-hmm. and he's like, oh, sir, you know anything about this? And it's the fucking guy from the Happy Madison movies. with uh, He it's... plays one of the two metalheads in Little Nicky. And he's the guy yeah. with the cross eyes, the crossed eyes in, oh, uh, yeah. in um, The Water Boy. Yeah. Yeah. And I, how? <laughs> Fucking how? <laughs> and and uh, Dread Central, why? Mm. Of all the things, of all the filmmakers, of all the writers who are kind of out there doing cool shit, to choose to present this on a website that I respect in the horror community, like, Why? And it sucks. Don't it does. Don't encourage him. And the jokes, the jokes are just bad. It, it's it's like Anthony was saying. He's like, oh, we got a call of an alien in someone's backyard, so we got to go check it out. And he gets there, and it's a Mexican dude with a rake, and he starts chasing him around the backyard, and it's just. The do, do you get it? The joke is that he's an illegal alien. Do you get it? Do you get it yet? Okay, I hate him way more than I did. <laughs> Before we start, yeah. I just watched Nick's face. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> drop all the humanity drain. Yeah, yeah. It's it's I I give him props for doing something, but there's a limit. There's yeah. if he's not gonna evolve, if he's just gonna stick in the same vein of like of like, hey, here's some here's some tits from these strippers I know. Pay attention, Rob Zombie. Pay attention, Rob Zombie. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, and he just he he just seems like kind of an unpleasant dude who has this really kind of antiquated dude bro outlook on things, and it really it really reflects poorly on his on his movies. I can't get over the fact that they would put this out. I Monster Killer Club. It's yeah. it, it's an interesting idea, and that could be a cool. Like a, it, it could be a fun web series. It's, Brandon it's and I have uh, two that... two friends who are awesome artists that they had a kind of a, a similar show, right? That they wanted to do, yeah. like a pilot. No, yeah. what were you saying? They're doing the show. It's a spinoff of uh, what we do in the shadows. Mm-hmm. That's the exact same thing. It's like cops, but with monsters. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So just watch that. Mm-hmm. It seems like everything that this guy does. Just watch the better version of it. That's not this fat fuck being a sexist well, like yeah. i don't wow nick's nick's <laughs> attitude turned, changed hey, yeah, his, your attitude is I fucking changed. changed well i mean if i don't know like everything that he's done there's a better version of and if he's just i again i didn't watch any of those interviews but from everything you guys have said if he's just being this sexist little fucking dick making these crappy movies don't don't encourage him. Make him go away. Make yeah. him a failure that like he should be. Like 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 all the other even half talented directors out there that don't get the opportunities that mm-hmm. they should. And then you're giving this guy a fucking web series on Dread Central yeah. with like recognizable act. Fuck you. Give that to somebody else that yeah. does better. The dude that made Man Bites Dog killed himself. Because he couldn't make movies because he wasn't able to succeed. But you're going to give Creep Creeperson a fucking career? Yeah. I don't know. The guy who fat guy waddles into... into yeah. Oh, you know what, Nick? I gotta say. <laughs> it's true. Bravo. You're... Uh, it's a pet I, peeve. I... I... <laughs> <laughs> I agree, and I, I, I know that we went into this saying we don't want to just shit on everyone. It seems like you can shit on him. This is a this is but, a different case, because like I said, I my opinion of him turned drastically when he had that, like, you know, it seems kind of gay if Dr. Frankenstein's making a dude. That's, that's, like, that's okay. what my opinion changed to. Well, it's like... Cool, man. Thanks. I, I, I Thanks for that. I can't really side with you anymore right because that's just that sucks that's such a dumb dude like mindset why yeah it, it it i respect anyone doing their own thing and trying to put out their stuff even if i don't like it but now that i've i've, I've watched i've watched so many fucking interviews with this guy i just don't like him he's just a shitbag which of a person which mm-hmm. makes the rest of of like his filmography just irritating to me mm-hmm. because I feel I feel like he lacks a fundamental understanding of storytelling which 
anyone can have. You just keep working at it and evolve. Right. Like Brandon said, you just evolve. You get better. Well, that's what I was saying about Frankenstein, it being one of his like early ones. That seems like it could have been a fork in the road. Right. He either went with the interesting artistic shit... Or he went with the boring, easy... He took the path of least resistance. He mm -hmm. went the easy way. Instead of honing his skill, he was just like, well, I can just do this yeah. forever. And somebody's gonna fucking... Buy. Some three assholes with a podcast are gonna buy at least two <laughs> copies of each of my fucking movies. It's true. Like, it... And then a website's gonna give me a, yeah. a web series. He has... He's a, he has a... He's a He's, well, I think his books are self-published, but he's yeah. also written novels. Right. Like, I give him credit that he fucking puts shit out, but if the shit you put out is garbage and not even... Like, he probably filmed Peeping Blog in a day because there's no plot. There's no plot. There's no development. There's no anything. It's just him with a cell phone camera. Like, it's a not movie... But he put it out as a movie. Like, he's got a bunch... He's got a large body of work, but that body of work took no work. So it's and, like, I can't get behind it. And there's an interview on the disc where he talks about Peeping Blog. He uses the word Hitchcockian. Oh, Jesus Christ. So... <laughs> Dude, he, he thinks dude. he thinks highly of himself, and I think that makes it worse, man. Mm -hmm. It does. Oh, like, of course it does. If you're if you're out there making shit movies, and you're like, yeah, I make shit movies, whatever, then fine, do your thing. But you're gonna fucking not everybody can have the kind of the the the, the positive fun aura of say Lloyd Kaufman, mm -hmm. yeah, or someone else. Lloyd yeah, Kaufman well, knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. no. He, he is very self-aware yeah. of what he is. Yeah. And, and that's he's, every time I meet him, he's so nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's like the nicest dude ever. So someone like Lloyd Kaufman, who the, a lot of the stuff that he puts out is garbage, I still support him because mm -hmm. he's not a fucking stool of a human being. Right. And he's nice. Boy, and he's, Nick's hard right turn yep, just killing yeah, me. Yeah. All right, well, I, I, think, I think that all of these movies... Are painfully boring, not inspired, and kind of. I, I don't know. The most redeemable is Frankenstein, I think, because it's a, it's a look into what he could have been, and what he just failed to be. Is that your, is that yeah. your opinion, yeah. Brandon? Yeah, I mean, I all of these movies are real bad. It doesn't help that he's that he seems like he's just kind of a jerk and just kind of an asshole. Um. Avoid these. Not, not that they're readily available really anywhere, but... You don't have to try hard to avoid them. <laughs> yeah. I've avoided them for fucking 32 years. So. <laughs> Just, I'd say don't give this guy any business. Don't give him your time. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of agree with both of you. I don't think that there's really any redeemable qualities to these movies. I, I, I'll give Nick some credit for pointing out that at least he's trying something different in doing Frankenstein, and I, I, I'll agree with that. It doesn't make it any less of a boring fucking movie to sit through. I don't find his brand of 16-year-old potty humor that interesting, which I realize makes me sound like a stuffy asshole. Yeah. But I think we, all three of us, we like ourselves some potty humor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just, his shit's dumb. It's dumb it's, and it's... It's, it's boring. It's, it's a lesser trauma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... I, it just doesn't vibe with me. They're too long. They're these are all short films that and they're too long still. Yeah, they're, they're an too, hour long. And they're, they're too, too long. yeah. Well, they're all they should have been short films. Yeah. As short films, maybe you get a more of a pass. But mm -hmm. as it stands, I cannot recommend ever checking out anything by Creep Creeperson. And that's where I'm standing on that. Does anybody have any final thoughts? I think I'm a dream. I, think I, we, I am so glad we never have to watch these again. Yeah. Oh, yeah, me I'm too. I'm glad that the words creep creepers and don't have to come out of my mouth. I cannot yeah. wait for us to build a wicker man, put these movies inside <laughs> of it, and then light that I motherfucker was, on fire. I was going to say, if we have to build a wicker man for creep creepers, we're going to have to reinforce yeah, that thing. That's going to have to be a big... <laughs> Wow. Big, this episode around. has just been all fat shaming. Yeah, we're just wow. fat shaming the shit out of him. I don't know if that's great, but but he's also you know kind of sexist and homophobic. So kind of. Fuck yeah. him. Yeah. Fuck him. Then yeah. Then huh, you're fat. Make better movies. <laughs> Make, Make better, better movies next time. Yeah. Oh whoa. Okay, you guys, this is getting like OC caddy, and and for once it's not me being the caddy bitch. All right. So what are we doing next time, Brandon? Uh, blood feast. Herschel Gordon Lewis's the Blood the, the original splatter film according to Google. Yeah, and, and, and Herschel Gordon and the Lewis. man himself. Right. All right. I've been <laughs> <What a> shocked. <laughs> <laughs>
I've been Anthony Trevino. I'm always Nick Rock. I'm Brandon Fries, and I'm a talking pie. Good night, everybody. I hear him coming. I hear him coming, coming. I hear him coming. <laughs>